Through 2021, I spent a lot of time refining my video creation process and scripts to make your experience from watching my videos better. So I started looking for inspiration from great movies, filmmaking and documentaries, took courses, checked out how other YouTubers did it and looked at different scripting software besides digging into my experience from management consulting. At the center of it all, as you have guessed already, are better stories being told in a compelling way. When I started digging deeper, I discovered a few elements that make good stories great. It all starts with a simple idea, then the narrative arc, add in great characters, the script, and different plots with twists and turns. To engage the viewer even more, I found great support through visual and audio elements to tell better stories. The content creation process may look simple on the surface, but it's actually much tougher when you want to incorporate all the important elements. Once you start to script the videos or your own pitches, you will quickly find out that other methods are simply suboptimal. So I came up with my own method using Notion which I have been refining throughout the year. I was inspired by filmmaking and script writing software to give me a lot of exciting ideas to execute this. Before I start to talk on how I use Notion as a content creator, I wanted to highlight that this would work for presentations, client pitches, blogs or vlogs, newsletters, podcasts and more. You may think that you could just create a few bullet points and wing the conversation by staying on the point. Have you ever wondered what it would be like to watch a movie that doesn't have a clear script? By scripting, you can cut down a 25 minute video to eight minutes, even before you go into the editing process. The final output from Notion is a very concise document that I use to color code using macros and then I use the same thing on my teleprompter. Once you have the central idea for the video, you can quickly break down the workflow into four blocks which are represented by different colors. The purple block refers to creating better videos to tell to your audience. The orange block refers to making your stories more compelling by adding in expressions and gestures and emotions. The red block refers to elements that YouTube needs to make your videos discoverable. The green block refers to elements that make the video transform from tell to show. So you can quickly see how the four blocks break down into 11 step scripting notion workflow. Before you start on this path, you need to do your keyword research that embeds right into the workflow to help YouTube surface the videos to people searching for it. While YouTube doesn't need the keywords at the global level anymore, they do extract keywords from the audio and text displayed on the screens as metadata. And this is where keywords are very useful. The entire story is broken down into chapters, which I try to elaborate in the purple dot block. I roll up the script into a chapters database that summarizes information, which again rolls up into a consolidated summary for the entire script. At the chapter level, I make sure that one chapter is not inordinately long by counting the number of sentences, words, and the time it will take to voice over these sentences. The consolidated summary gives me the overall length of the proposed video. I have a YouTube factory workflow that looks at all the 41 elements and goes through a detailed questionnaire to ensure that I've considered all material steps in the completion of that workflow. All of this rolls up into the Gantt chart where I can get a visual snapshot of the key pillars for creating the YouTube video. This workflow has a ton of views and checks that are driven by formulae. I use the narrative arc view to break down the idea into chapters and scenes. Then by using the elements of the story circle, I go ahead and craft the story. You don't need to use all the elements of the story circle. And sometimes you may go back and forth between the different elements. Sometimes a script is arranged chronologically by day or by week. But in the absence of all of that, it'll be arranged by scene. 
There are different types of stories, archetypes and components that go on to make it really interesting. This notion workflow helps me through the thinking process for the story along with different plots. For each act, I review the rhythm to narrate the story, fast, normal or slow. At the time of outlining the script, I may get ideas around B-rolls, graphics, presentations, text or anything else which I can capture around the notes column. This is where you start to incorporate open loops into the act for better audience retention. It's best to get an independent reviewer for your script to make sure that it's easily understandable. Your story may need a few passes, different elements combined with user experience elements that we will talk about next. As you write the story, the first question you ask yourself is, what do you want the audience to feel as you narrate the story? This quickly translates to the desired rhythm and the open loops that we discuss under storyboarding. You can express the act in many different ways, like with a smile or by stressing on a word or a group of words. I have incorporated three different expressions that I can add at the beginning or mid-sentence by noting down one, two or three within the square brackets. I have plenty of expressions to choose from and I can add in my own from time to time if I find something missing. Similarly, I have three gestures that I can incorporate by act. Just note here that these are multi-select properties. Hence, you can select more than one expression or gesture at any given point in time. I started this because I discovered that I often forgot to smile. I review my smiles and open loops in the chapter summaries as well. You will notice that all of the information that you are entering goes into the complete script column automatically for quick reference. At the end, I review the keywords that I input with the script to ensure that the right words are being used based on my keyword research. This goes along with the description that I write out and helps viewers find my videos easier. While most of my videos are solo, I incorporate different actors like my twin, my AI-based voice assistant Jarvis or any other person. This requires me to split the dialogue to record separately or where I need to change costume. Combine that with the process of identifying B-roll, presentations and graphic elements to make the story more interesting and it converts a video from tell to show. At this point, if you can't think of a visual element or the act that does not progress the story forward, it's clear that the act will be cut out from the final video. As part of my workflow, I capture images and presentations for visual elements that are automatically transferred using rules inside of another app that I use called Hazel. I capture the B-roll references inside of this database, which are the file names that Hazel has renamed these two. I use this script at the time of the edit and drop these into the timeline. The final column is complete script that I copy from my actor-wise teleprompter view and send it to TextSoap for color coding and then drop it into the teleprompter software. TextSoap is indispensable to run regex macros color code with a single click. Now you're ready to record your A-roll and do the final edit by ingesting all of the A-roll and B-roll material into the editor of your choice. If you are not yet part of this community, do consider subscribing and don't forget to hit the bell icon to stay notified of new videos. If you like this video, consider sharing it with your friends. Stay safe, stay healthy, peace.